here is how I made a Krieg Lord Solar. Solar. So solar. This idea comes from a comment. A guy named Gnome said he'd love to see me kitbash a death core of Krieg Lord Solar. And I thought it was a really good idea. Firstly, I looked up what this Lord Solar guy looked like and started to brainstorm. His data sheet says that he has a pistol and a melee weapon. So I should probably try to include those. Here's a rough sketch of my plan. I forgot what a horse looked like. I ended up using a lot of Station Forge bits for this. The kits that did the heavy lifting were their National Guard Cavalry commanders and their Grim Guard Cavalry. The horses from the National Guard were a little more fancy than the Grim Guard ones, so I went with those. I also kept an arm holding onto the reins that went with the horse I chose. I brought in a Grim Guard torso and mirrored it by making the X scale negative one. Then, in sculpting mode, I used the Elastic Deform tool to pull the torso into the legs. I still don't really recommend doing this because, if you're not careful, it can create pockets where resin can get trapped, but here I am still doing it. Next, from their Acolyte kit, I brought in a shovel arm. I also clipped in a cape from the National Guard kit we were using before. I separated it from the original torso with Boolean differences. I went around with the Elastic Deform tool and made sure everything was looking as natural as possible. And with that, the digital part of the kit bash was done. I thought he was missing some of the pizzazz that the official model had. I didn't want to try to sculpt anything crazy on his chest piece, so I decided to sculpt a laurel on his helmet with green stuff. First, I mixed some green stuff and let it sit and cure for about 30 minutes. This way it becomes easier to work with and shouldn't be too sticky. To make each leaf of the laurel headband, I pulled off an extremely tiny piece of green stuff with my X-Acto knife and rolled it between my fingers into a little teardrop shape. Next, I lightly placed the microscopic leaf onto his helmet. I was shocked by how little green stuff was actually needed. With one leaf down, I repeated the leaf making and placing process until I had the right amount of leaves on one side of the helmet, placing each one a little offset from each other. I repeated the process on the other side of the helmet. In addition, I did the second half better than my first attempt, so I redid that first attempt, which was frustrating, but I'm glad I did it. I'm very surprised it turned out as well as it did, and I'm super proud of myself for even attempting to sculpt something so finicky. Lastly, I glued on a holstered pistol, and it was time to paint. As always, I started with a base coat of black and then a zenithal highlight. I also sprayed up from below with a brown ink to give the shadows a warmer tone. Starting a mini like this is a great way for applying glazes and contrast paints, as well as simply making it way easier to see details. Next, I started base coating. The recipe is actually pretty identical to my Dark Tide minis. I used dark rubber for the coat. and a glaze of black for the pants. Next, I painted all the armor and metal. The armor is painted with the black we used before, mixed with some metal color steel. I painted the embellishments and laurel with metal color copper. Then I glazed red onto the horse blanket. I don't know what it's officially called. Then it was time to paint all the cloth and leather on the mini. The rider's mask and various straps were painted with skeleton horde contrast paint. I cleaned up some of the straps that I got paint on with white, then applied snake bite leather contrast paint. I liked how it looked on some of the smaller straps, but not on the larger straps and the saddle. Maybe I have to thin it more for larger objects, but either way, I ended up painting over them with model color flat brown later. I painted the boots, 
scabbard, and holster with burnt umber. Next, I went around the mini and painted cables, handles, and boot treads with black. Then I applied a few coats of a red glaze to his cape. Lastly, I painted the eye lenses with white. This sets a good base for finishing the eyes later. With the base coating done, I moved on to the oil wash. The oil wash is made with a pipette of white mineral spirits and a 2 to 1 mix of black and brown oil paints. I just got whatever the craft store had. This isn't a very intense mix. It's mainly there to cover up any little areas I missed, to create better separation between parts of the model, and to do some shading for me. After covering the whole mini, I took a clean brush and wiped away excess in a downward motion. Making an oil wash is one of those things that feels like it will take a lot more effort than it really does. If you time it, it probably only takes about a minute to do. I let that dry overnight, and then it was time to highlight the bejeebus out of this thigh. Everything is basically highlighted by mixing the base color with either model color buff or white. I spent longer on areas that draw the most attention, like his holster. To highlight the armor, I started with French Mirage Blue and slowly added more model color buff until I was happy with how bright it got. The armor wasn't as smooth as I'd like, so I took French Mirage Blue and thinned it with water into a glaze consistency. Then I went over all the armor. This really smooths out transitions. The more layers of glaze you do, the smoother it will get. I went in again and added a few brighter edge highlights afterwards. Then I made little scratches and dots with near pure buff and a little bit of white. Then I painted above the scratches with black to give the weathering some depth. This mimics light hitting a raised edge, which tricks your brain into seeing the chips as 3D. I also added a touch of steel paint to the most weathered edges. I repeated this step with every piece of armor until I was satisfied with the amount of weathering. Next, I took silver and gold and highlighted the rest of the metal. I highlighted all the black parts with gray. I 
I then made little spots on the horse with very thin dots of gray. I felt like this was a small step that made a big difference. Then I tackled the eyes. This is really hard to do while filming since I have a big camera in the way, but I did my best. I started with a white base coat, which will make the thinned red ink I add to fill in the eye show up faster and more true to color. After layering on the red eye color, I made sure to let the ink fully dry again before adding little reflection dots with a white ink. I then mixed the same red ink with a little black and painted the middle of the eye to increase contrast. I had to go back and strengthen the red on the lower rim as well as paint the white dots again. I then did a little object source lighting coming out of Lord Solar's eyes by thinning the red ink down with a lot of water. One of the last steps was to do a null oil panel line, which really helped on this particular model to create separation between parts of the mini. Lastly, I added his regiment number on his right shoulder pad. I used a decal I made for this. I cut the decal out, soaked it in water for a minute, then stuck it on, and brushed a little microsole on to really get it to form to the shoulder pad. I added him to his base, and he was done. I really like how he turned out. If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. I also made a buy me a coffee if you're trying to support the cause. Leave any suggestions or feedback in the comments below. Alright, bye bye